ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out at two. I am your host, the excellence of elocution, Mr. Donnie Wonderful, flying solo today. Just turning on this microphone to share a few quick thoughts, which was inspired by, I don't remember the YouTube page, but they had a poll on that YouTube page that centered around The Undertaker. Now, glancing back through our channel's content, we shockingly and surprisingly don't have a lot of content on The Undertaker, who is admittedly my second favorite wrestler of all time. However, this poll here, I believe it had four or five options for this, and it was the question of this, uh, the title of this video, where would you rank The Undertaker? Uh, the first choice was number one, the greatest of all time. Second choice was, I believe, top five. The third choice was top 10. And I think the fourth was top 20. Let's talk about this because I'm really interested and intrigued on your thoughts and reactions to this post, um, to the poll rather, and yours being our faithful supporters of the Smart Tank Revolution as we edge on to 1,000 subscribers. I thank you all in advance. But I'm curious to get the um, the opinions of the masses here. And I will indeed share mine. And I'm especially um, interested in hearing uh, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Joey Business, who's been absolutely killing it with his videos and uh, ratings and descriptions. And if you haven't heard the last few Smart Tank uh, Revolution uh, videos, ratings, and, and content that features Mr. Joey Business, please, I implore you to stop this video right now and go back and listen to it. It's all golden, as everything he puts out on this channel is. But I'm interested to hear his uh, take on this as well. But I want to talk about The Undertaker for, me, for, for a quick moment. And um, I voted oh no 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 okay wait a minute uh, yeah yeah one was top five i think um i'm sorry before it was top five it was top one maybe um top one to three then top five there was quite there was quite a few options here and um admittedly the only two options i thought that deemed fitting for mr calloway aka the dead man aka the undertaker aka the phenom was either number one or top one to three but the more i thought about it arguably you can make an argument for the undertaker to be the greatest wrestler of all time number one definitely on the mount rushmore i believe and at this point in wrestling history i believe you have to have multiple mount rushmores but he definitely deserves to be on one of them and I think it was the Attitude Error Jim Cornette promo where he said he wants wrestling, where he was the first one to acknowledge the greatness of The Undertaker. And I'm paraphrasing it because all of this is off the cuff, but he said something to the effect that Undertaker and Steve Austin who have not made the claim to be the best wrestlers today, but rightfully deserve that 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 um, that moniker, and I believed them then. And this poll, and I apologize for not remembering or notating which um, YouTube channel had had um, listed it. If you know it, please uh, leave it in the comment comment section. Um, and I'll go back and I will give them their credit for such an incredible question. The Undertaker, amongst everyone that you can name as number one, maybe outside of Ric Flair, has likely wrestled more versatile opponents in his career than anybody else. That you got to see many aspects of his wrestling ability. Um, you guys, if, if you're not new to this channel, you know how I feel about Brett. Brett was a real wrestler. And I will always say that Bret Hart is the greatest wrestler to put ever lace on a pair of boots. But The Undertaker had to do an under a gimmick. And we can all agree, I believe we can all agree here that The Undertaker gimmick's the greatest gimmick in wrestling history, right? 
there were things that happened in the Undertaker's career that were wasn't intentional. You know, it was just by happenstance, i.e. the streak. The streak became more illustrious than the title match. After a while, like when it became like 20 and 0, it's like who's going to defeat the streak? Who's going who's going to snap it? Now that obviously ended up being Brock Lesnar, but if the streak were continuing today, if it was still and still a thing today, which it should have been, can you imagine? Even though he's retired, the wrestlers that would be clawing and aching just to try to get in the ring with the retired Undertaker to snap the streak, it would still have its illustrious allure. It still would. It would still be a thing. It would still be a marketable thing. I don't know what the Undertaker would be, minus the the loss to Roman Reigns and and, and Brock Lesnar. Somebody else do the math for me. But that would be amazing. You can still market that today, even though the man's retired. I can still see the call-outs just because it's something that's damn near the holy grail of wrestling, especially at the granddaddy of them all, as they say, right? Um, But yeah, uh, the different incarnations of The Undertaker, which all were kind of relative to his original gimmick outside the American Badass, which was uh, himself. All of that was a home run at at at, at the right time. Um, the Undertaker even said it himself. You know, he felt the gimmick getting stale. I never did, but you know, I I can remember Judgment Day 2000 um, when he came out for the save in the um, the Iron Man match between The Rock and Triple H. I remember seeing that incarnation of the Undertaker and just going ape shit because. Number one, he he looked different, but you know, like there was something about him. Now he looked like bounty hunter ish. And, and and he did it well. The American Badass was great. And then uh, of course the Buried Alive match in um of two thousand four, two thousand three, maybe, uh likely two thousand I'm getting the years off. But WrestleMania twenty, he comes back um you know with Paul Bearer. And and uh, I don't know. I I call that the Revenant Undertaker, you know, even though he's already dead allegedly. But everything worked. Everything worked. The only time the Undertaker, I believe, his his returns was upstage. Um, no, the last Gunslinger. Um, he came back with Triple H. Uh, that night, that um, Triple H's return got a bigger pop. Uh, face to face, they both look into the WrestleMania sign and and all the unspoken words was the loudest thing that you needed to hear or I guess visually see, but everything seemed to work even when it wasn't supposed to. Uh, they make jokes about the undertaker wrestling giant Gonzalez and WrestleMania nine. And that SummerSlam too was interesting. I don't know what a rest in peace match was, but that was the only one that ever was. And from there, I believe uh, Taker moved on to wrestle Yokozuna. So he had all the giants. He wrestled all the giants and the freaks. Um, I can tell you one thing. And essentials for The Undertaker would be golden. Would be It's, it's just all nostalgia. And, and there's so many classic moments and there's so many classic robberies that, that you can chop them up in, in five-year increments. And the body of work is just there. And I think another thing that puts The Undertaker as number one, if you can have a classic match in your golden years, I believe that that solidifies you as being one of the goats of wrestling, if not the goat. Now, 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 now. What I mean is Bret Hart was probably 40 years old. And back then in the 90s, Back then in the 90s, being 40, technically in that profession was old, all right? Like now with modern with modern medicine and technology, 40 isn't old. You know, I don't care how, how, how you look, 40 isn't old anymore. You can rehab your body, you know, now like there's a better health and wellness policy and programs. They have pursuits there. Like, you know, there's ways that you can get more mileage on your vehicles. But back then, man, no. So Bret Hart was about 40 when he wrestled Steve Austin at at, at uh, WrestleMania 13, and arguably the greatest match ever, arguably. Um, and I say that biasly. But I'm referring to 
Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. They did it twice. I like WrestleMania 25's match uh, better than WrestleMania 26's. But the fact that that, either that was likely the greatest match in the history of wrestling, and it was between two guys in the golden years of their career, the golden age of their career. You know, they've, they, they had more matches behind them than they would in front of them. Um, HBK, of course, retired uh, the following year, and, and uh, Taker went until uh, had a, had had what what year was that? I don't know. Had had probably like ten or twelve years after that. Um, again, forgive me for the math. This is all off the cuff. But those in those prime years, Taker was still performing at a, on a, on, a, on a high level. Um, you know, him and Randy Orton, I think that was before. Yeah, that was WrestleMania 21. Him and um, Taker and um, uh, Batista still having great matches. Uh, the Triple H feud. And, and then it became like those WrestleMania feuds, you know. You know, him and Bray was a really good match, too. And we hadn't seen Undertaker on screen in a full calendar year. Uh, the Roman Reigns eh, wasn't as good. But, uh, um, you know, the Elimination Chamber match that they had that even he said, you know, well, he felt really good about uh, he felt really good about that match. And like during those times, man, uh, you know, Taker had taken a lot of punishment. So his body was surgically enhanced. He would take time off and then would have to train to get his body back to to WrestleMania, WrestleMania shape. And, you know, like that just. That that right there, and 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 seeing the behind the scenes and and the the Mark Calloway transition to the character of the Undertaker, and then seeing him back, seeing him backstage and his interactions and being the locker room leader, like all of that really has to go into that that whole who's the greatest man. Like I, I think that should count, I, and I think that should uh that should make a case for him to be uh, number one, even though I still believe that's Brett. But now I will say uh, Brett's the greatest wrestler to lace, ever lace a pair of boots. And I say that with acknowledging that it's one and one A. I'm going to put The Undertaker up there. So before I go on any more tangents, I want to ask and implore all of our loyal uh, supporters and subscribers to weigh in here. Where do you rank The Undertaker? You rank him number one. He's the GOAT. Uh, one to three. Still respectful. Top three. You rank him top five? Top 10? Or top 20? Which I thought that was crazy. I thought that was crazy. I And I I remember picking, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go with number one. Again, what that means for me is 1A. Him and Brett. But I was curious to say, and I meant to screenshot it. Had I thought about it, I meant to screenshot it, and I should have posted that here. But um, I wanted to know what everybody was uh, to get the temperature of what the voters thought where the Undertaker ranked, and I don't remember. So that's why I'm making this video, and I wanted to pose this question to all you smart tankers out there. Let me know. Where do you guys rank The Undertaker? I cannot wait to look at these comments. Please, please, and offer any supporting evidence to back up your claim or refute mine. I welcome it all. We want the smoke. Donnie Wonderful, thank you guys for, uh, for listening. And please uh, like and subscribe. We're on our way to 1,000, and we appreciate all the support that we're getting and our new supporters promise that we'll entertain. So on behalf of Joey Business, again, I am Donnie Wonderful, signing off.